Hey, it's Merrill. Welcome back. Uh, click on any of the images to go to the appropriate video. And uh, this is part two of the shading tutorial uh, that will show you how to draw uh, Amare Stoudemire's uh, body. Um, you're going to need um, something to blend with. It could be a Q-tip, it could be a paintbrush, um, it could be a uh, blending stump. Um, fingers, if worse comes to worst, but um, definitely one of the three mentioned before will do a better job for you. Um, we're starting out with the shorts. It's a nice easy place to start um, and as you can see uh, I'm starting out really light. I'm building up the shadows on the inner leg. Um, we want to give it shape and um, you know usually that's uh, when you're drawing legs that's one of the darkest areas. Uh, that's almost always in shadow. Um, it, it, maybe with the exception, um, I'm only saying this because we're drawing a basketball player, um, you get a huge glare uh, when, um, you know, somebody's on the court. The lights are overhead and, um, you know, it, it bounces off of the floor, so that might not be the case if he was, like, on the court, but still, you'd see somewhat of a shadow. Um, the folds at the top are the trickiest part, and, um, you know, you want to do more than just leave them as lines. You see me using that that blending tool. If you have a Q-tip, um, you know that will do the job for you. The blending tool will do better. But um, the reason that I like the blending tool is because you could pull those lines straight down. So in other words, make them with the pencil and then pull them straight down, extend them, um, and they're not going to be as dark because that blending tool has no graphite in it, uh, like a pencil. It's just a piece of paper, and you just put it to the edge and you pull it down. And it's the differentiation in those lines, the differences in those lines, that'll really make it. Uh, now we move on to the hands and the basketball. And I'm actually, uh, you're going to see uh, when I move on from this, the hands are not going to be totally finished. Um, I I'm going to be uh, doing the finishing touches at the end. I'm going to pull everything together at the end. Um, but right now we want it to be close enough um, I wasn't quite sure of the shading on the pants uh, at the time that I was doing the hands. Um, you know, I wanted to use a little bit of uh, creativity instead of uh, going by the picture uh, because it didn't look right going by the picture. But basically, um, because of everything that I just said, because I wasn't sure, um, I just went in with the um, with the shading tool and I put a little bit of graphite and I just pulled it over. Um, the basketball. I just alternated very simply. Yeah, darker tones and then white, darker tones. Um, this hand, I'm just making sure uh, that I put the uh, the edge on uh, a little bit darker. So the uh, the corner of the hand, um, you know, facing away from Amare, um, it's going to be a little bit darker. You're going to also see me do the arms. Um, you know, a little bit more when I put the finishing touches on. But it doesn't really make too sen uh, too much sense to go too dark right now because you want to see how it looks uh, like right next to the jersey. Because you could guess wrong if you don't have um, all of the pieces of the puzzle in. Um, drawing from observation is really a lot like, draw like uh, putting a puzzle together. And if you don't have some of the pieces of the puzzle, you're not going to be able to solve it. It's a pretty accurate analogy, I think. Um, I am doing cross hatching, and you're going to see me use the uh, blending stump and a paintbrush uh, to smooth it down, to smudge it down. Then you're going to see me add more hatches on top. When I say hatches, I mean line next to line next to line. Some of you have been listening to me forever. Uh, some of you are tuning uh, in for the first time. Um, I sound like a broken record for those of you who have been listening forever, but um, you know it's important to highlight it for those of you who are listening for the first time. There weren't too many folds in the uh, jersey. There's um, you know, at the top around the collar. You know it's it's dark, um, and then there's a few of those uh, folds right there, but. Um, I'm going to actually darken it around there because it kind of looks a little bit strange right now. Looks like a Star Trek uniform. You know, with the star. I mean, they didn't have a star, but... 
you know what I mean. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, there you see me darkening it there. If anything really sticks out and looks funny, uh, you see what I do? I, I just go over it with the brush. I push it down. And, um, you know, with, with skin tones, you know, you're going to get a range of tones, definitely. But, you know, it, it looks strange. People look diseased if you don't smooth it down enough. So I, I make sure to do that. Now you see me building up uh, more tones and taking away. Kneaded eraser is a nice little tool. Just picks up some graphite. Um, yeah, putting edges on. You're going to see me work more with the head. The head is in the awkward stage right now. Um, but you're going to see me fix that in the next one kind of alternated. Um, again, the edges of the uniform, you know, I wanted to make sure they go a little bit darker, but I can't make it look like lines. Don't want to make it look like lines. Okay, here's where you're seeing me do all of my touch-ups. Um, I'm making a little bit of a reflection on the pants, because they're uh, shiny material. The hand I just kind of um, retouched the area in between the fingers. Now it looks like a hand. And I'm looking at it from a distance. Uh, that's very important when you're drawing. It helps you gauge things. Okay, so um, I guess if you've gone this far, you want to hit part three. Also, be sure to check out my other, vi my other videos below.